Good afternoon and welcome to the Church of the Ascension on this beautiful Sunday afternoon, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. We are glad that you are here uh, in church and we welcome those as well who are with us on Zoom. It is our pleasure today to have our own David Case playing organ and David, we thank you very much for playing for us today. Now let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We say together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Savior. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
eine Lesung aus dem Buch des Propheten Jeremia. Da sprach der Prophet Jeremia zu dem Propheten Hanania in Gegenwart der Priester und des ganzen Volks, die im Hause des Herrn standen, und sagte, Amen, der Herr tue so, der Herr bestätige dein Wort, das du geweisagt hast dass er die Geräte aus dem Hause des Herrn von Babel wiederbringe an diesen Ort und alle weggeführten. Doch höre dies Wort, das ich vor deinen Ohren rede und vor den Ohren des ganzen Volks. Die Propheten, die vor mir und vor dir gewesen sind von Alters her, die haben gegen viele Länder und große Königreiche geweissagt, von Krieg, von Unheil und Pest. Wenn aber ein Prophet von Heil weissagt, ob ihn der Herr wahrhaftig gesandt hat, wird man daran erkennen, dass sein Wort erfüllt wird. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Let us say together responsively by the whole verse, the portions of Psalm 89 appointed for this day. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Come, Holy Spirit, come. Take our minds and think through them. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our hands and work through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with the flame of your love. Amen. In case you missed last week's gospel, or if you've forgotten where we left off in the 10th chapter of Matthew's gospel, Jesus said to his disciples, the ones he has just commissioned, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Let me tell you, that was a challenge to preach on that last week. So today's gospel, by contrast, feels a bit more approachable. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. It's a short reading, three verses in total. And this first verse gives us the theme of the whole passage. A person could be forgiven for assuming the question we should ask today is a straightforward one. 
What does following Jesus require me to do? Clearly, the answer has to do with hospitality. Jesus wants me, Jesus wants us to welcome anyone who comes through these doors or who shows up online, right? Evident that that's what this is about. Go out into the world and offer a cup of cold water to these little ones, as Matthew calls them, which really could be children, but more often it meant just ordinary people, little ones. If that's the answer to the question, what would Jesus have me do in light of this gospel, then the answer begins to feel like a command. It's another thing we can add to our to-do list as disciples of Jesus. Be good. Be faithful. Care for those no one else cares about. Be a friend to someone different from you. Welcome others to church. But what if that's not the right question to begin with? Biblical scholar Ralph Jacobson suggests another question. What does this text mean? What does it mean for me, for us? Listen to those opening words of the passage again. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Did you notice the emphasis on the word you? What difference would that make? What if Jesus isn't telling us to be the ones who welcome? What if he is pointing out, reminding us that we are the recipients of that welcome? What if it's not a commandment, but a promise? A promise that you have already been welcomed, accepted into Christ's body, the church. And it's a promise with no strings attached. If you could believe that, believe that God welcomes you, not only to this church, but into a relationship with God, what difference would it make for your life? What difference would it make for all of you in your life together as the Church of the Ascension? It occurs to me that it might make all the difference in the world. What if you simply received this gift with open and generous hearts, as a grateful community of sinners and saints who have been blessed by God, loved by God, and given the promise of welcome and acceptance? Wouldn't that imply that we see ourselves less as those who have already arrived, but as people still on a journey? What if we could see ourselves less as those who don't have a racist bone in our bodies and more as people who carry inside of us, all of us, old prejudices and fear of others different from us? Isn't it closer to the truth that we are in need of the same promise, that we all need a cup of cold water every now and then? What would a community look like if this model of hospitality lay at its core? <clears throat> For seven years, Dorote Han was a missionary of the Episcopal Church in Romania. She was working among Eastern Orthodox Christians in a context where her ministry as a priest was restricted by her gender. Yesterday, I watched the video about her work produced by Episcopal News Service a few years ago. Some of you have seen it. In fact, I would guess that many of you have seen that video. I had seen it before as well, but since we're sending Dorote out into the world once again today, into a different kind of mission field, I wanted to look at it again. In this video, Dorote moves so easily among her congregation, walking with a physically and mentally challenged boy of eight or nine, 
teaching German to a group of young students, a gift that will open the door to a world beyond their rural village, singing in the choir, serving as the official photographer at an Orthodox ordination. She was offering cup after cup of cold water to those children and women, the gardens she tended, and the choir directors who were all part of that parish, her parish. Where do you suppose she learned about that kind of hospitality? Where do you imagine she experienced God's love, God's welcome, acceptance, and embrace in the first place? I did not ask her about this, but I'm fairly certain she experienced it for herself in that kind of welcome in a number of places and among many different people. But I have a hunch it was here in her home parish, the Church of the Ascension, where she learned it best. I believe that's true because in the past year, I've seen it again and again, how much she loves you. It is who you are. It is part of your DNA in this place to be a welcoming, receiving, accepting people who know that you are God's beloved. As our days draw to a close together, some of you have felt it important to assure me that the church is going to be okay after I leave. That you are, at least some of you, sad to see me go, but that you are strong and you'll be fine. I know this. I'm not worried about what will happen to the people of Ascension in the future. Yes, you are facing new challenges, unexpected, unforeseen, but you are God's beloved. And that is indeed a promise and a gift. And it's also a challenge. Please stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
The prayers of the people are found in your bulletin. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Once again, welcome to Church of the Ascension on this day. We are so glad that you are with us uh, here in the church and on Zoom. In addition to uh, our thanks again to David Case for playing organ, I just want to say again how much I appreciate the ministry of the altar guilds, the cleaning team, the ushers, and the tech team without whom this service could not, would not be possible. Thank you all. And if any of you, if any of you who are here and you're not on a team and you would be willing to help out by cleaning or uh, uh, with the tech team, if you've got expertise in that area, particularly the cleaning team could really use a few people who would be available just to come a little bit early. And the cleaning procedure is very simple. It's not a lot of work, but it's very important that we sanitize the place before people come in. So if you're willing uh, to, to help with that, just see me after the service or send me an email. Next Sunday, we have a very special guest preacher. Michael Curry, the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, will be with us, not in person, but he is preaching uh, for the convocation, a sermon that is for the churches of the convocation. And we will, he will be with us via Zoom uh, in a sermon that he's recorded a, a day ahead or so ahead of time. But I am, it's, I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, Bishop Michael preach. Most of you have heard him at least once, uh, but, uh, and some of you have heard him more often than that. He is fabulous, and he has a particular word for the churches in Europe next Sunday. So be here or be on Zoom in order to hear that. A reminder again as we move now to the Holy Eucharist that our procedure is a little bit different than it has been in the past. 
we invite you to, first of all, wait in your seats until an usher indicates that you can move forward. And when the ushers tell you that you can move forward, you come to the front. There are dispensers here that you can sanitize your hands with one more time. And then there are kneelers around. If you would position yourself either standing or kneeling in front of these one person to a kneeler, so should be room for four people at a time. Extend your, your arms as far as you can with your right hand on top of your left to receive the host. I will place the host in your hand. And then if you will take that back to your seat with you, uh, wait, until, uh, wait until you're back in the seat to take off your mask because this is the other thing. Many of you, most of you have removed your mask, which was allowed as of today. Um, once you're inside the church, but we do ask that you put your mask back on before you come forward to receive communion. So please help us with that. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, 
who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, the all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
standing and turning to the final page of your bulletin. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacraments of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as Dorote comes forward for her sending prayer. Old Catholic congregation in East Vienna, uh, Wien Ost, uh, this week. And uh, I normally at Ascension, you would all come and surround her and put your hands on her, but we can't do that today. So imagine, yeah, I don't think that's a good idea, <laughs> but you can imagine virtually, uh, virtually doing, uh, sending your joining me in this, in this plus. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you have bound this congregation together with Dorote over many years, many journeys, many resting places. We give you thanks for her ministry among us as priest, deacon, preacher, singer, altar guild leader, missionary, truth teller, and friend. May the Holy Spirit continue to inspire her as she leaves us once again as missionary to the East. We trust she will bless the people of Christ Chapel in Vienna East as she has blessed us. Be with her as she leaves and be with th those of us who stay. Grant that all of us, by drawing even nearer to you, May always be close to each other in the communion of your saints. All this we ask for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Dorothy, would you give us your blessing? I've been blessed by you, and now I, thank you, Ellen, I'm allowed to bless you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.